Now, it's all about getting people back on bikes at the NABD. Um, Stuart Kershaw, you, you have a disablement, uh, uh, an arm. What, yeah, what? Uh, that's correct, yeah. I've actually got what they call a brachial plexus injury, which is uh, I haven't got a lot of use in my right arm. Um, yeah. As it is, I've got about 45% use in it. Right. Uh, so what I've had to have done is to change all the controls from the right onto the left, uh, i.e. normally the throttle is on the right, yeah. which is now on the left here. Um, which obviously, as you can see, twists. The top one here is the front brake, and the bottom one is the clutch. Um, it is. It does probably look a little bit complicated to use, but actually, it is quite simple. I mean, all right, we can't really f sort of uh, show you on film, but i.e. setting off just like so. Yeah, riding along. So that, that, that's your clutch there, yeah. Clutch, so you've yeah. got you've got to you've got to twist that and let the clutch out at the same yeah, time. Yeah, at the same time, like that, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, if I'm in traffic and need to stop, I can also pull the clutch in and at the same time use the front brake. You must have very good muscles in them fingers yeah. now, Stuart. <laughs> well, it's reasonably strong, yeah. But yeah. with it being a, a disc front brake, it is quite uh, a good brake, right. so you don't need to put too much effort into it, really. And th that's a pretty standard modification, is it? Yeah. 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 So there's absolutely nothing over here at all? Nothing just, at all, apart from the, uh, the light switch. Yeah. And I've got my light... Uh, yeah, I've got my high and low beam here, my indicators and my horn, and the uh, start buttons here. Excellent. There so, you go. Yeah. So there's no excuse for getting back on your bike. That's right. No problem. Go for it. Just do it. <laughs> there you are. I've got with me Chris Island of Desperate Dan. He's got a little badge on here which says Dan Dare, which for the uh, the younger ones, if you might not know, but he was a comic character. But you're not a comic character, are you? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> with what we build. Now, I understand you're able-bodied, but I'm not sure about the mine, because this is your trike, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. It looks an absolutely mega machine. It's a 350SE Mercedes V8, double overhead cam, fuel-injected, nitrous oxide injection. Jaguar rear suspension, narrowed 18 inches, and we've got the widest street legal tyres in the world on it. Well, I saw these things. What are they? Are they rain tyres off an F1 car, or, or just what are they? No, these are road legal tyres, specially made for funny cars. Yeah, and we had extremely funny cars. Very funny, yeah. And we had the wheels made in the States as well. Back wheels and tyres, £2,000. Oh, God, and how long are those going to last you? A long time? I, I hope so, yeah. I don't want to replace them. So, t tell us just what you have got here. I mean, you, you've said the engine here, but I mean, have you made this completely, stem to stern? Every, every single bit of it, all made in-house in our workshops. But, I mean, the reason we won, we, we run Desperate Dance is to make enough money to build these for ourselves. Yeah. You know, we're not breadheads, we're not interested in making a fortune, we just want trikes, and the bigger the better. And, and this is, is this how you started doing this work for disabled bikers? We got in it by mistake. We um, got partying with a bloke in a wheelchair. Everybody else was ignoring him. So we went and partied with him, got really drunk. And then he said, I'll have a trike off you. And we had to work out the adaptions. And it, and it went on word of mouth from there yeah. until it's got crazy now. It's so busy. But it's just a pleasure doing it. You know, if we could do it for nothing, we would do. And so you, you must have built up a hell of a lot of expertise. So it, it, almost, it doesn't matter what the disability these days, I presume? No, we built one trike for a bloke with no legs. We built a trike for a chap that was paralysed from the neck down. He couldn't ride it, but he could sit on it, and his mate drove him around. Yeah. And it's just a pleasure getting these blokes back on the road. Seeing the faces when they collect them is the payment. What would you say was the most sort of interesting or innovative um, trike, other than your own, that you've done? Anything that you're particularly proud of? Oh, most of them. Yeah. I mean, everything that goes out of the workshop, we're proud of. I and mean, we try and, even if a bloke's only got a thousand pounds to spend, we're still proud of what goes out. We put our best into it. Yeah. So the, the front suspension looks very substantial. I mean, have you got an engineering background anyway, or is this trial and error stuff? Self taught. Yeah. My, my son made the front end. Yeah. My, my eldest son works for me. 
Yeah. And, and, he's all, and you don't have any problem MOTing and getting no. roadworthiness and all the rest of it? None at all. I mean, if we got a motto, it'd be over-engineer, and we always over-engineer. Well, I must say, it looks like it. The chassis looks as though it's um, scaffold tube. I'm not being it's disrespectful. Oil, oil rig tube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's two inch seamless. <laughs> Even better. And what sort of performance do you get from this thing? I mean, you can actually wheelie this, I presume, it's stand it on its back. Too heavy to wheelie, but um, if we could pull 8,000 RPM, you've got 267 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to do that, are you? No, I've done 160, and that's enough. Have you? Yeah. I have with me Mike Harper. He's got rather a snazzy outfit here. It's not an AA outfit, it's an AA yellow, the share chair. Mike, very nice little outfit. What's this one all about? Well, it's um, a sidecar that allows disabled people to um, ride motorcycles, basically, in as far as uh, um, one of the problems I have as a paraplegic as a result of a motorcycle accident is that I unfortunately have to take my wheelchair everywhere with me. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, inspired me to develop the share chair was um, independence. I wanted to be independent and included in motorcycling. And so I sat down uh, quite a few years ago talking to a lot of people uh, to prepare uh, what I thought would be a credible unit to put into the marketplace for disabled people. So what actually happens then? Okay, so we need to rear access the the, uh, the back end of the sidecar. And uh, just like a child's transformer, it all comes apart. Just watch me. Okay. Even Lazy Man's electrics open the ramps. Why not? And I, I quite haven't got over the, um, the principle of landing the ramp onto grass uh, it is designed for road use and uh, sometimes they get a little bit snagged but uh, with a few helping hands i'm not alien to help yeah. the front end you need to expose all the elements to allow you to work freely to transfer over onto your motorcycle well, if you hang on to the mic Dick, i'll kick the bottom in there then, okay no trouble okay that's it yeah, I can see what happens because yeah. that ramp will stick into the um, ground, yeah, whereas on tarmac it'll just I mean, roll. Uh, it is honestly designed for road use, and what we've done, in, in uh, the, because this was first at the Mo, we've actually incorporated a set of wheels in each of the, the ramps that are like roller bearing so they sit down so it's even the you know as you as you build each one you're looking at making it better and yeah. i think maybe in a couple of years time it even might be different to this but the basic shape is there and the principle okay well we'll see how you now uh, roll aboard okay i'll have a go So we shut the ramps behind us. Yeah. Uh, you haven't got an automated umbrella, have you? Because it's just starting to rain. Motorcyclists get wet. <laughs> you know, if you if you're worrying about the rain, drive cars. <laughs> well said. It's a bit easier to work with the uh, bare hands, but in this rain. Remove the side of my chair and have a go at like, getting on it, hopefully. And it's much easier when you're wearing motorcycle gear because you can hold on to your boots yeah. and not worry about uh, falling off it. I bet you draw a few crowds, don't you, when you're doing this? But one of the things that disabled people have problems with is they have inhibitions, many disabled people have inhibitions about, uh, you know, having to make effort. Yeah. And uh, I think that may be, you know, to their detriment. Because uh, if you make effort, uh, if you're prepared to make effort, you succeed. And basically, I'm on a Honda 750, which is an American import which will be in August, one of the very latest BMW R1100 RT, which I've ordered. 
And very nice too. And so this is it. And there's a, a happy man. And a way to go. It's key in. A bit cold, but what I'd give for that 20 years ago.